Hello, folks. Brother Kevin again from Cologne Baptist Church here. If you have your Bibles and would like to open up to uh, Galatians chapter 5 again, we're going to be talking about another fruit of the Spirit. We've been talking about love, joy, and peace. And the next one is long-suffering. Long-suffering. And so if you're in Galatians chapter 5, in verse number 22, the Bible says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Well, we'd like to talk about long-suffering. Of course, everything that we were talking about, the first three were mentioned, they were kind of upward. Everything's upward to the Lord Jesus Christ first. And uh, love, joy, peace comes down from Christ. And uh, we need his long-suffering. But uh, we want to kind of try to uh, put that in an outward uh, feeling today, uh, directing it, uh, the first three being from God down to us. But these are also from God, but maybe a, a responsibility of ours is to be long-suffering and gentle and good. And so uh, we'll take a look at these next three. Um, I'd like to go all the way back to Exodus chapter 34. Exodus chapter 34 and verse number 6. And we'll take a look at uh, what uh, Moses had written back here in Exodus chapter 34 and verse number 6 about long suffering. And uh, this is the second time that uh, Moses was supposed to take two tables. And remember the first time he, he broke them and came down and they were dancing. They were, oh, man, they were bad. They were, they were uh, worshiping the two calves that they had made. Anyways, down here in verse number six, the Bible says, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, in abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. Well, there's so much tied in here with long suffering. We see mercy uh, that's tied in. We see uh, grace. We see uh, goodness and truth. Why truth? Praise the Lord for the truth of the Word of God. We, if we didn't have the truth, boy, what would we have? Um, turn up, since we're right close by, let's turn over to Numbers chapter 14. While we're here in the Old Testament, Numbers chapter 14. We have uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers chapter 14. And let's pick it up in uh, verse number 18. Verse number 18, the Bible says, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiven iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation. Here again, we see long-suffering is mentioned first, but we we see it mentioned with mercy and forgiveness of sins. Boy, we praise the Lord for that. I'd like us to turn over to um, Second Peter. Second Peter is probably well, it's one of my favorite portions when talking about the long suffering of God. Second Peter, chapter three. Second Peter, chapter three, and uh, he's warning us in the beginning of the, the chapter about. Uh, People mocking the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ you know, for the second time. Uh, creation, evolution, and like that is, is the thought here in the beginning of chapter 3. But down here in verse number 9 of chapter 3 of Second Peter, the Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. Well, praise the Lord for that fact, that God is long-suffering. That When we hear the gospel, maybe the first time, maybe we don't respond, but God is long-suffering to us. Word. Notice, 
not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's not willing that any should perish. It's not the will of God. But it's up to you, it's up to me, it's up to each individual to choose. But God is long-suffering with us, to be patient with us and giving us many chances. When I was reading over in Job in chapter 33, often it says God does these things in our lives. He's, he brings things to our attention. He brings the gospel to our attention. We might hear a, a portion of a message, maybe a song that has a gospel message in it. So many ways, maybe a, through a track we pick up, maybe through somebody just witnessing to us. There's so many ways that God can uh, work through us, and he's very long-suffering. But not only to the unsaved is God long-suffering, but I want us to think about how long-suffering God is to us, word, now that we are saved. Wow. Praise the Lord for his long-suffering. Boy, <sighs> he waited a long time for me. Uh, to want to get things straight, turn my life around. He was long-suffering. Boy, I'm so glad that he was. But now he wants us to be long-suffering. But let me let me just give you a couple things. If you turn back to 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 3. Look at number number 15, verse number 15 of 1 Peter chapter 3. The Bible says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. We were talking about uh, the heart last week. But in our hearts, uh, love, joy, peace has to be in our hearts before we're going to have any kind of long-suffering towards others, towards others, like the Lord has had long-suffering towards us. And uh, if we turn back to Romans, Romans, this is always one of my favorite verses. Romans chapter 8. <coughs> Romans chapter 8. And we'll pick it up in verse number 28, but there's uh, even more than that after. We want to read verse 29 also. But Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28. <coughs> the Bible says, and we know. Boy, aren't you glad of that? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Wow, that's such a comfort to me to know that whatever happens, God is working that for good to me because I love God. How do you love God? You trust in his son that he sent for you to, to pay for your sins, who died on the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, when you accept him. You love God. You're showing your faith and trust in him. And there's some more things that will get you there. But notice that to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Wow, what a comfort that is. If you love God, you know God's doing it for good. Whether or not uh, uh, it might be good for your family, might be good for your friends or neighbors, relatives, I don't know. But it's going to be good. It's going to be, God's going to work it out. Now, sometimes when we read in, in Hebrews, we're talking about the chastening of God in chapter 12 of Hebrews. Now, none of that at the present seems to be joyous. Yes, but afterwards, what? Yeah, afterwards. And that's what we're, we're talking about. God's trying to do a work in our hearts. And he's long-suffering to us. We're trying to make us what we ought to be. Now, let's take a look at verse number 29 of chapter 8. For whom he did foreknow... He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of Christ. Hmm. His son. Are you in the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, his son? That's what we're supposed to be conformed to. That's what God has predestinated. When you hear about the predestination, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about God has made it so that we should be like the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if we're going to have love, joy, peace, then we need to have the long suffering of Jesus Christ towards others. It says that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called and he 
And whom he called, them he also justified. He's declared us righteous who have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, and the, uh, whom he justified, them he also glorified. Wow. Are you glorified yet? It's just as though you are right now. You're glorified. That's kind of a strange thing, isn't it? Just like right now, you are glorified with Christ. You're in heavenly places. Yes. What are you setting your heart on? Hope you're setting it on heaven, on heaven and uh, things above, not on things in this earth, according to what Colossians talks about. Uh, turn back to, anyways, I was just thinking about that. We're already glorified, and God is working good for those who love God. Let's say for those who hate God, who are against God. Um, let's just turn back to um, Romans, since we're right here. Romans chapter 2. And let's look at verse number 4. The Bible says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness. And here we have goodness. We've talked about love, joy, peace. We have long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. Hmm. All of these things are tied in together, we'll see. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering. Wow, here we have goodness, forbearance, long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth us, leadeth thee to repentance. Boy, God's long suffering and his goodness towards us is to lead us to a knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wow, we'll talk about the goodness coming up. But here again, we see the long-suffering of God. It's tied in with God's goodness, tied in with his love, joy, and peace. And if you have God's love, joy, and peace, then you'll be long-suffering. You'll be more patient towards people. Turn back to, to Psalms, Psalms 86. Psalms 86 and verse number 15. And uh, we're kind of... Thumbing around, we're not going to spend a long time today. But Psalms 86 and verse number 15, the Bible says, But thou, O Lord, our God, full of compassion and gracious, <clears throat> long suffering and plenteous in mercy and truth. Boy, there's a lot of things in there, aren't there? Because of God's long suffering, he shows forth his mercy. He's showing us the truth. Uh, many times uh, people hear the truth more than one time before they get saved. Usually it's a number of times people have heard the truth. I, I wouldn't really even be able to count how many times. So many times that no, it just doesn't get in here. It doesn't get into our brains and into our hearts. We might hear it and we put such a little stock in it that we didn't even realize we heard the gospel. But here we see the full compassion and graciousness and long-suffering of God, plenteous in mercy and truth. We need to have the truth, folks. If you don't have the truth, then you don't have anything. But the truth is, <clears throat> the Bible says the wages of sin. What we deserve because of our sin is death. He's talking about an eternal death there. We all ought to go and die and go to an eternity in hell. That's what the Bible's talking about there. I said, how do you know he's talking about that? Because what he's contrasting it with. But, well, I'm so glad for the buts in the Bible. But the gift of God is what? It's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord for his long suffering towards us. But he's still trying to work in us to make us after his own son, after the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's trying to do. His compassion towards us is so that we'll be compassionate towards other people and long-suffering to them like he was to us. How long did it take you to get saved? How long has God been working on you? Well, you're still here, so God's still working on you. He's working on me, praise the Lord. Got a lot of work to do, I know. Got a lot of work to do. Turn over to Jeremiah again. Jeremiah, again, this has become one of my favorite uh, verses. Jeremiah chapter 15. And you say, Jeremiah chapter 15, you're not going to go to verse 15. Or 16, uh, yes I am, I'm going to go to verse 15 first though. Look at Jeremiah chapter 15, look at verse number 15. O Lord, thou knowest, remember me, visit me, and revenge me of my 
<coughs> excuse me, persecutors, take me not away in thy long suffering. Oh, praise the Lord for God's long suffering to us. And uh, he was long suffering to Jeremiah, he's long suffering to David, he's long suffering to heaven, to me. Praise the Lord for his long suffering towards us word. And he says, know that for thy sake I have suffered rebuke. Uh, you know, Bible says so, that all that will live godly shall suffer persecution. Are you living godly? Well, it says we're going to suffer persecution because of it. Are you ready to suffer for him after Jesus suffered for us? Yeah, he was long suffering for us on the cross. Oh, my. Anyways, then look at verse number 16. The Bible says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. I'm called a Christian after the Lord Jesus Christ. What a great honor that is to be called after the Lord Jesus Christ. Do I look like him? Do I act like him? Am I long-suffering towards others as he was long-suffering towards me and is still long-suffering, waiting for me to change things in my life to get things right before him and we should all be doing those things now let's turn over to um let's turn over to um we'll turn over to uh, second timothy we'll turn over to second timothy we're going to close here um let me go over to 1 Timothy first, and then we're going to close in 2 Timothy. But 1 Timothy chapter 1, look at verse 15. The Bible says, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. This is the Apostle Paul saying this. In verse 16, How be it, for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. Hmm. In Paul, he's got to show forth all long suffering. Yeah, remember what Paul was doing? Yeah, Paul was persecuting the church. Remember, Paul stood by when James was being stoned, or Stephen, excuse me, Stephen was being stoned? Wow. In fact, he was, he was hanging on to the clothes, he used the coat rack. They laid him down at Paul's feet. They called him Saul at that time. Wow. Remember what Jesus said, Paul? Said, well, actually, Saul, Saul at that time, he said, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Well, praise the Lord for those pricks in our heart. That's how God deals with us first. He pricks our heart. Boy, you know, you pick up this Bible and you read it, and boy, the tears will start flowing down when you realize that you disappointed your Savior. Your loving Savior, the one who died for you and gave himself for you, that you can have life eternally and be with him in heaven, have a home there. Wow. Well, he says here, How be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them that church hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. You see, it's a pattern. Paul's saying that pattern that Jesus had for him, he's going to pass it on to others. He, he wants to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our pattern. And many folks have had a pattern. You know what a pattern is. You use that to make whatever else you want to make a copy of it, a duplicate of it. And so you have to have a pattern. Well, that's what the Lord Jesus Christ is. He's our pattern. He's our pattern in long suffering, but he's also been our pattern in love, joy, peace, before we even get to the long suffering of God. Now let's turn over here to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're going to be closing here. And I just wanted to pick it up in verse number 10, and then we'll read on down through here. And I, I think this has to pertain more to us this portion in chapter 3, but we'll go into chapter 4, and that pertains really to the preaching of the Word of God and to the, the minister 
of the word of God. But picking up in verse number 10 of chapter 3 of 2 Timothy, the Bible says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine. Boy, that's interesting. First thing that Paul is going to mention, you know what I teach. You know what the word of God says. How do we line up with the word of God? You know, God is long-suffering to us, word, and that he is trying to get us to have the word of God in us. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Is the word of God in us? Have we studied it? Have we uh, meditated upon it? Have we mused on it? Have we memorized the word of God? The doctrine, do we know what the word of God says? Can we take the word of God and show somebody how to be saved? Can we help them in their uh, their walk with God. We saw a pattern. We'll see a walk, a manner of life. That's the walk of life. The way that we walk in this life, manner of life, the way you, you act and everything. How do you walk? Uh, can you show somebody by the things that you do what it means to be a Christian? By going to church, by giving, by uh, doing those things, witnessing to people? Doing those things that God wants you to do, wants me to do. Manner of life, purpose. What's our purpose? You know, sometimes people's purpose is to make money. Sometimes people's purpose is their occupation, their, their job, their vocation. But what's our purpose? Our purpose is to serve the Lord Jesus Christ with all long suffering. He says, what's our faith? And again, uh, faith is one of the, the fruit of the spirit. We'll be looking at that. A little bit more down the road. Long suffering, mm. charity, patience. All these things are, are tied in together. And Paul's saying, You've known all these things about me here, Timothy. Persecutions, afflictions, which came under me at Antioch, at Iconium, and at Lystra. What persecutions I endured. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. You know, it's interesting when I, when I was reading Acts and and God says, Paul, you're going to Rome. And so Paul ended up having to appeal to Caesar, right? And guess where Caesar was? Yeah, he's in Rome. That's where they're going to send him. But God worked that out. And you think, well, why did that happen? Because Paul was going to Rome. Jesus wanted Paul in Rome, and Paul was ready to go. He said, I'm ready to go. And I said, I'm ready to die for the Lord. doesn't matter. Are you ready to do whatever the Lord wants you to do? That's part of that long suffering. What do you want to do? Do you want to do what you want to do? Or do you want to do what the Lord wants you to do? So anyways, he says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There's that verse again. If you're going to live for God, you're going to suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Why? You see, these people, they're just deceived and they're being deceived. They're deceiving others. And so we try to prevent the deceivers from deceiving other people and give them the, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. He heard them from the Apostle Paul. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Yes, it's it's able to. Has it? Have you gotten saved? Did you get saved as a child? Are you living for the Lord Jesus Christ? Does anybody know that you're saved? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Praise the Lord. All scripture comes from the, from the Holy Spirit of God and is profitable for doctrine. There it is again. He talks about doctrine. The teaching of the word of God is so important. Otherwise, we don't have anything because a lot of false teachers are out there during Jeremiah's day. He's constantly uh, talking about the false teachers. In fact, he tells some of the false teachers, listen, God's upset with you. You're going to die this year because you're, ta you're teaching people false things. So guess what? God says, that's enough. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take you away this year. And he was gone. Who do you believe? Do you believe the word of God or do you believe some person? I hope you believe in the word of God because that's the only thing that's going to stand forever. 
The Bible tells us that. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. Oh, reproof, what does that mean? It means he proves us wrong. Oh, you ever been proven wrong? Yeah, many times, many times. Many times have wrong attitude, wrong desire, have a wrong heart. I, I, my, I want my ears to be tickled instead of hearing the truth, what God says. You know, I want the pastor to hurry it up, you know. I want to get out of here, have no patience, because I don't want to hear what God has to say to me. If you have, maybe you've never been in that spot. You know, I have, though. And so God is constantly working in me. He's reproving me. And boy, when he does that, and then he opens my eyes to see that, oh, man, what a wicked person I am. And then he says for correction, he, so, he shows us how to correct where he's reproving us. He doesn't leave us there. Praise the Lord. That's why the word of God is so important. For instruction in righteousness, so that we can do that which is right. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, truly saturated unto all good works. Praise the Lord for that. And that's to us, I think. God's trying to do all these things for us. And now we need to understand a little bit about how God's working through our pastor, our preacher, and the evangelists, the missionaries. Chapter 4. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. He's talking to Timothy, a young preacher there. He says, preach the word. And he's going to tell him some things here that maybe he doesn't want to hear. Notice. Preach the word. Be instant in season out of season. You know, there's time when, man, it seems like, wow, there's a, a wave of, of the preaching. Of, people want to hear what the Word of God has to say. And then there's a wave kind of like, I think we're in now, where people don't want to hear what the Word of God has to say. <coughs> and uh, the preacher has to preach it all the time. When people want to hear it, and when people don't want to hear it, he's got to preach the Word of God. He's got to be faithful. Timothy says that over in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Thou therefore be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. There's four generations there. He's teaching Timothy who's teaching others who are going to then teach other people. There's four generations there that are mentioned to being faithful. And here... He has to preach it if people want to hear it and they're desirous and they're crowding into the churches, can't wait to get to church to hear the word of God. And, and they're attentive when the preacher's up there preaching and then when they're falling asleep and when they really don't want to hear it and when they're staying away, got to preach it all the time. It says reprove. Uh oh, there's that word again, reprove. We had reproof. It's a way of life. The Bible says reproof is a way of life. I think the pastor is going to be coming across that in, in Proverbs. That's why it's so important to be here on Wednesday night to hear what the Word of God has to say. Reproofs are it's, it's a part of life. It's just necessary. And he says, for the pastor, you have to reprove, rebuke. Ooh, that's even a little stronger. Rebuke people. Listen, you're not doing that which is right. You know what's going to happen? It's going to cause harm. It's going to cause harm. He says, Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Boy, the pastor has to be so long suffering. Why? The long suffering of the Lord. <coughs> and we'll pause here for a moment. Just look over in chapter 2 of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, and look at verse um, number 24. The Bible says, and the servant of the Lord must not strive. He's talking about the pastor, the preacher. <coughs> the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Gentle. That's the next one we're going to be talking about in the fruit of the Spirit. There's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, <coughs> meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And so here he's mentioning that in meekness. Another one, another fruit of instructing those that uphold themselves. 
You realize that we oppose ourselves a lot of times, and the pastor has been called to God to get us to stop opposing ourselves. Because when we're opposing ourselves, it means we're not for God. And so he's trying to get us to do what God wants us to do. It says, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. You know, many times we fight against the truth. We fight against the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Yeah, the Satan has our minds mixed up. And because they're selfish, usually, things that we're, we're looking at. When you're long-suffering, you know what? You're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about others. And, you know, joy, <coughs> that little uh, uh, three-letter word, Jesus, others, and you. If we put Y in front of it, we got Yorge. Yeah, that don't sound too good. No, joy is a lot better than Yorge. If we put ourselves first, Jesus, others, and you. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And so that's what the pastors, I mean, he's he's got to be long-suffering to us word. Wow. How should we be towards our pastor? Well, I think we ought to be long-suffering towards him too, don't you think? I mean, our pastor is, I'll give you a little, a little clue. Our pastor's not perfect. Our pastor makes mistakes. Yes. But you know what? God's working in it. God's trying to correct those things in our pastor's life and the things that he goes through a lot of times is because of us that he is using us to correct him on some things and he's using our pastor to correct us praise the lord i'm glad our, our pastor hasn't cut me off many times that i've messed up and like that but he's been long suffering he's given me a good pattern to follow and so he says Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Again, you have to teach them what's right. The only way to know what's right is by reading the Word of God, your King James Bible. He says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Wow, are we at that point now? Boy, I look around in our country and I can't believe you know how some people think. They won't endure sound doctrine. What's basic? True. No, they, they won't endure it. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having, as we talked about, those itching ears. You just want to hear smooth things. You don't want to be told about your sins. You don't want to be told about uh, the things in your life that are not pleasing to God. Boy, well, that's the only thing when we stand before God. We don't want God to throw them all out. They're going to just, well, here, we'll put them on the fire. Wow, they all burned up. We don't have anything to show except our salvation. That would be a terrible thing, wouldn't it? And so the pastor is trying to work all these things in us. And then he says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You want to be turned unto a fable, a make-believe, a made-up story like evolution? Yeah, a lot of people believe in evolution. It's made up, folks. God created heaven there. I keep Reading through the Bible, Jeremiah talks about the creation. John talks about when I read in John, he talks about great. David talks about great. All these people are wrong. Moses talks about the creation. Our, Isaiah talks about the creation. Peter talks about the creation. Wow, all these people here, they talk about creation. No, the people who are evolutionists are wrong. They're false prophets. Folks, you have to get into the Bible. You have to read the Word of God. And he says, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. That's what our pastor's doing. He's making full proof of the ministry. He has to endure and afflictions. He has to be long-suffering to us word. Why? He's a pattern for us. You know, whether or not he likes it or not, we're watching him to see how he reacts to things, how he's reacted to this pandemic. And many times thinking, oh, man, come on. And then I read the word of God and I hear him preach and think, oh, God, man, you're so hard. You need to be like what your pastor is. He's a, a good example for it. So I hope this has been a, a help to you, folks. Uh, it's been a joy to talk about the long suffering because the Lord has been so long suffering to me. And I just appreciate his long suffering. And I, I hope you've learned something about the long suffering 
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a great day.